What's going on everybody? My name is Kyle Welcher and thank you for clicking on my video. I've been making these YouTube videos for a while now and people that have been watching my videos for a long time know kind of the way that I do things. I don't really like cut any corners. I don't waste any time and I tell you all the truth. And if you're new to the channel, I hope that's what you find that I do as well. Basically in this video right here, we're going to make, we're going to be, it's going to be called the truth series. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through every single technique, every single style of bait like whether it be crank baits top water spinner baits chatter baits worms creature baits everything we're gonna go through it all and i'm gonna tell y'all what you need to keep in your boat and nothing more we're gonna do an absolute purge on your fishing tackle because everybody keeps too much crap in their boat so all these people that are making recap videos and you know tips and tricks videos right now are usually have a lot of sponsors they have to answer to so what it ends up being is a constant plug of whoever's making the video becomes a constant plug of their individual sponsors and I don't have any big tackle sponsors to answer to as far as soft plastics go or crankbaits or stuff like that so I can tell y'all exactly what I believe to be the truth so in this video series that's what we're going to tell y'all now keep in mind fishing is in itself a series of decisions and what we believe to work is just a you know like our past history reflects on what we think is going to work in the future so keep in mind everything that i do is what has worked for me in the past is this is not stuff i've read in a magazine this is stuff that i've actually put you know forth in real world applications on the water and it's what i've had work for me so keep that in mind you might have to you know deviate a little for your home lake or whatever but these things work for me all over the country i will see y'all in a minute and talk about today's subject welcome back to another true series this right here is going to be the bulk of the clutter in almost everybody that I know personally's boat it's also the bulk of the clutter in my boat and it was for many many years especially now I've got it toned down just a little bit because we're trying to get max speed out of this big ranger boat so I try to get all the way out of I can so I've got it kind of tamed right now but anyways soft plastic worms I mean this is pretty much the bailout bait when they're not biting this is the bait that they will bite and what you're going to hear me say a lot with these worms right here is dual purpose or even you know more than two purposes so a lot of times whenever i'm keeping a worm in the boat i want to make sure that i've got a couple different applications for it i don't want to keep a worm in the boat that i'm only going to throw around you know a very specific you know style of structure because let's face it you got something that's six inches long and super skinny a fish is going to eat it like it's just the profile that a fish likes to eat so it's not super important for exactly how the tail looks or all that stuff is that profile gets ate by a bass so i'm gonna show you the ones that i keep and the colors that i keep because my normal thing is i keep a black and blue and i keep a green pumpkin of everything but in worms is not like that because i'm gonna throw worms in finesse situations so let's start this off with the worm you see me throw all the daggum time just a, a stick bait oh fumble just a stick bait i keep these in two colors i keep them in green pumpkin and i keep them in june bug now do i sometimes you know buy a different color just to fish with it yeah i buy a baby bass or i buy the green pumpkin with the uh purple and green or whatever it looks kind of like a bluegill but do i think it makes a difference absolutely not i just kind of get them sometimes just to mix it up now like i said this thing right here has more than two purposes this is the wacky rig worm in my opinion this is the one that i throw all the daggum time if i'm throwing on a wacky rig i'm throwing on a spinning rod same thing if i'm throwing on a shaky head this is a absolute killer shaky head bait as well i throw it on a spin rod eight pound test something like that Another really good thing you can do with it is you can just put it on a Carolina rig. I mean, it's like a Carolina rig bait for a long time when this first came out. It was a really big Carolina rig bait. So anytime I'm fishing for spotted bass or a little bit smaller largemouth, if I'm going to throw a Carolina rig, which I absolutely hate to do, I usually do throw it with a Senko on the back of it. Now, another thing you could do, instead of wacky rig it, you can, you can rig it on just like a four alt round bend hook. You know, rig it straight, Texas rig style with no weight. You can throw it up in the grass, throw it up under docks. You're gonna, you can hit anything you want to and not get hung up. But whenever you, if you see it in the water, it falls exactly like a wacky rig. Like it still shimmies exactly like a wacky rig. It's just a little bit more weedless. So that's the benefit of that. And like I said, I usually have to keep a bunch of packs of these because this specific brand is very easy to tear up. Like they very, you lose them very quickly. So I'll keep four or five packs of green pumpkin four or five packs of June bug in my boat at all times or black and blue or whatever it is that I've got at that time. So number one, that's the the one worm I couldn't go without is that dude right there. Now, this is the worm that I throw probably the second to most. So y'all see me throw this thing in every single application. I'll put these on the back of a shaky head and I'll put them on, you know, weightless like you've seen me doing for the past while. So basically you have to keep these in two colors as well, June bug, and green pumpkin now this is 
I throw a shaky head some in stained water. So that means I, I, this is my shaky head worm, period, first off. So you have to throw a shaky head sometimes in stained water. So I do keep these worms in a June bug color. Another thing when you go down to Florida or you fish in tannic water or anywhere the water is just a little bit darker, the June bug really, really shows up. You put this on like an eighth ounce weight, four out round bend hook, pitch it around to everything and anything you can see. And this sucker right here will get you some bites. Just don't fish it too fast. What kind of worms are they? Oh, my bad. These are six inch just straight tail trick worm style baits every, every brand has a different name for them but this is just called the zoom trick worm so that's what that's this is the worm that i throw a lot of times on fishing for spotted bass stuff like that on shaky head this is the one that i use for shaky head worm and you know i use it for a few different things but shaky head and weightless is the main two now whenever you get into the worms Okay, I'll go through these one time first. So this, I feel like you do have to have one sh smallish worm with a really action-y tail. So, you know, if you can figure out what I'm saying by that. So this is the actual Ultra Vive Speed Worm. This is a good worm. You can you can rig it on like a 3 alt 4 alt hook, 8 ounce weight, throw it out, and just straight reel it back to the boat if you're reeling it over wood, reeling it over grass. I mean, you can fish this thing weightless. You skip it on a dock, you just reel it. It comes right under the surface, like almost like a top water. But you just rig it on a straight 4 alt hook pitch it out there on a spin rod and just reel it you'll catch some on it now another thing that I, I got on this bite a few years ago it's been a while now i'm getting old now actually but it's been a long time i would take this and put it on eighth ounce shaky head and i would skip it under the front of floating docks and what was happening is in the post spawn a lot of these spotted bass and decent large mouth were suspended on these floating docks and whenever i would skip this particular worm under there the tail really really kicks has a really consistent action falling and the eighth ounce weight so this thing would just like kick like crazy while it's falling and a lot of times I would catch suspended fish because it had that action while it was straight falling and if I didn't catch one I let it hit the bottom and just drag it out real slow like a normal shaky head so this is a worm that you can fish a few different ways a shaky head weightless on the, on the Texas rig and just reel it it just has a little bit different action a lot more action than the trick worm style bait does so you got to keep these in a couple different colors now that's where the dual colors really runs out like for me these next few worms, I'm not going to throw whenever the fishing super is, is, you know, when the water's stained. I'm going to throw this whenever it's really clear and it's really tough to get a bite. So, number one, you have to keep a pack of these in your boat at all times. I keep two packs of the exact same thing. This is the original TRD because when you're not sponsored, you can use the original of everything. So, this is Green Pumpkin. I put this on an 8th ounce Ned Rig head and that's the only thing I do with these worms. But I have to keep them in here because Ned Rigs is such a trend right now. The fish eat it like they've never seen anything like it before a lot of times. So this is a this is not a bait that you want to pitch around cover. This is a bait where you want to pitch to the ugliest banks you can find. That's what it seems like for me anyways. Flat, clay points, pea gravel, stuff like that. You throw this thing up there to it, if there's a fish there, they're going to eat it. So. I don't keep these in any color except green pumpkin because if I'm throwing it, it is tough and the water is clear. Now, th that goes the same thing for my smaller drop shot baits. We'll go right to the drop shot right now. I keep two sizes of drop shot baits in my boat at all times, four and a half inch and six inch. And the reason for that is if I'm fishing for a decent sized largemouth, I'm gonna use a six inch all the time because like I said, it's not too big of a profile. It's like the perfect size. That's what a bass wants to eat. It's something that's long and skinny. They just like, they like that profile. So if I'm fishing for spotted bass, if I'm fishing for smaller large mouth or small mouth, I'm going to use a four and a half inch worm. I keep the four and a half inch worms in very natural color because I be, the water's usually going to be clear. I'm usually going to be fishing a little bit deeper. And I'm, I want to have like really natural, a lot of the greens, a lot of the green pumpkins. I will keep a morning dawn style color of these. But for the most part, I keep these in very natural colors. Another thing I like to do with this worm, if I'm not rigging on a drop shot, like in, when, when the fishing gets super tough sometimes around really shallow isolated cover I like to take this tiny little worm and put it on an eighth ounce shaky head or a lighter weight shaky head with a super small hook and pitch it around this shallow cover and drag it super super slow I mean I did this last October with this exact same pack of worms a little bitty shaky head and I caught a lot of fish and I was sight fishing for a lot of cruisers and they would really commit to this bait because it was so small and it was like it doesn't disrupt what they're doing. If you pitch it in there, it's just so small. It's like, I don't know what you would call it. It's like not a threat to them at all. Whenever they see it, they just, they're not frightened by it at all. They just run over and a lot of times they eat it. Sometimes they don't. It's just a great way to, to really, really drop down and finesse around shallow cover whenever you can't, you know, throw a, something like a drop shot is just a, a little bit different in my opinion. Now, go straight to the six inch drop shot worms. So this is the ones I keep in a few different colors because I don't have to, I just do. So I keep them in, you know, I've got 
the moon and dawn colors and I've got the, the green colors. I've got some of the chartreuse colors. And I'll tell you, for me, I only throw the moon and dawn in the green. That's just what I've seen to catch them on everywhere I've went. And that's what I just keep throwing. And like I said, this is my number one go-to drop shot worm whenever I'm, you know, fishing for largemouth. Now, I have experimented with these. Put them on a uh, trick worm. I mean, not trick worm. Put them on a shaky head. But it does seem like the trick worm is just as good. And that's the one that I've caught the most fish on. So I continue to use the trick worm almost primarily. So, y'all hear the birds chirping in the background? That means it's time to go fishing, dude. Like, that's what I'm getting ready to do right now. We're actually going down to a lake of mine, and we're going to fish today. But anyways, now, this is the worm that I don't throw a ton, but I do throw it consistently every single year. I throw it a, a decent amount. And this is the just a big ribbon tail worm. This one right here happens to be a plum color. I keep these in two colors. I keep them in plum, and I keep them in green pumpkin. Now, the reason for green pumpkin or the reason for plum, there's sometimes in the summer where it just seems like they really get on this style or in color bait better than any other colors I've ever seen. So I like to throw these around super clear water. If you're fishing brush piles, you're fishing the edge of hydrilla, I only throw these the same way. I, I rig them on, e on, I will rig them on an eighth ounce head all the way up to a three eighths ounce head depending on what I'm fishing. If I'm fishing a lot of really high thick hydrilla, I'll rig this thing on an eighth ounce head, get on the edge of it, and just drag it off the edge. And I've caught a ton of fish doing that. But if I'm going to fish brush piles that are in 15, 16 foot deep, I'm going to put it on a three eighths ounce head just so it gets down there really, really fast. I can make a cast and hit the brush pile, you know, as efficiently and fast as possible. I don't think the rate of fall is too important when you're fishing brush piles because usually they're like kind of in the brush piles. So keep these in two colors. I know there's a lot of different ways to fish this. I got friends of mine who will take this thing and rig it straight and just throw it out on their docks and just straight reel it and they whack them on it. I just don't do that because that's not me, but keep these in two colors, but the black and blue is out for these. Now, not, I, I know this seems like an over consolidation and I mean, if you've got your own personal opinion on a certain worm that you think works great for you, keep throwing it by all means. But this is just a guy to tell you like, this is all you need. Like really, that's all I have in my boat. The difference is I'll have like four packs of each one just in case I get on like the best bite I've ever been on in my life. But that, that's literally what I have is four packs of of the green pumpkin and four packs of the black and blue of every single one of those and that's all i keep in my boat and i catch them from coast to coast on those exact same baits so now don't get me wrong confidence is the most important thing in fishing so if you have confidence in a worm keep throwing that dude right there but if you don't this is a good starting point for your arsenal so i appreciate you guys watching leave me another comment for what you think the next true series should be hope y'all enjoyed the video me and hunter's about to go fishing i will see y'all next time